What's good, Doug here, diving into the nitty gritty of real estate, your purchasing power. This isn't just about what you earn, it's about playing the market like a pro. Let's get into the weeds of what really matters. And don't just sit there like a bloody Muppet. Smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for the raw truth in real estate. It's about to get all stupid up in here! Right, Alfie. So, purchasing power. It's your financial clout in the property game. It's about how much house you can bag for your buck. First, let's talk interest rates. Those slippery bastards can make or break your bank, can't they? Exactly. Interest rates are critical because they determine your mortgage cost. A lower rate means you pay less over the life of your loan, enhancing your purchasing power. For example, on a $300,000 loan, a drop from 4 to 3% interest rates could reduce your monthly payments by a significant margin. Ooh, and you want that. Making a more expensive home suddenly more affordable. It's like scoring a luxury ride for the price of a bloody beater in it. You got it. Now your credit score. This number is like your financial GPA. A high score can get you lower interest rates, meaning more affordable loans. It's based on your credit history, timely payments, credit utilization, length of credit history, types of credit used, and recent credit inquiries. It's crucial to maintain a good credit score by paying bills on time, keeping balances low, and avoiding unnecessary new credit lines. Keep your credit score high and you're the king. Fit up and you're royally screwed. Income and debt to income ratio. These are biggies. Your income shows lenders what you can afford, but your existing debts tell them how much of your income is already spoken for. Lenders typically prefer a debt to income ratio lower than 36%, with no more than 28% of that debt going towards servicing the mortgage. It's about showing you can handle your current debts and a mortgage comfortably. So splashing cash on every fancy toy ain't gonna cut it. Maybe I'll buy a boat. Precisely, it's about financial balance. Market conditions also play a role. In a buyer's market, your money talks louder because there are more homes for sale than buyers. So you might find a better deal and have more negotiating power. In a seller's market, it's the opposite. Higher demand and lower supply can drive up prices, meaning your purchasing power might not stretch as far. Like being the last bloke at the bar, scrambling for a deal. Exactly, and the down payment. This is your upfront commitment in the home buying process. A larger down payment reduces the loan amount, which can mean a lower interest rate and less paid in interest over time. It also affects your loan to value ratio, which lenders use to assess risk. The lower the ratio, the more affordable the loan terms can be. A hefty down payment and you're ahead of the game. Your purchasing power affects everything from the properties you can consider to how you negotiate. It's about knowing your financial strength and playing it smart. It's like having the right gear for a tough hike. Know your strength and you know where to trade. Remember, your purchasing power isn't static. It changes with your financial situation, market shifts, and even government policies. Stay informed, adapt, and always be ready to make your move. Stay sharp and don't let the market catch you with your pants down. To wrap this up, understanding and maximizing your purchasing power is key. It's about being realistic, prepared, and switched on. It's what separates the dreamers from doers. Thank you for tuning in. If you're stepping into the real estate ring, whether you're buying or selling, text or email me. Let's turn those property dreams into reality. Until next time, stay savvy and keep it real. Cheers, mate.